You're watching Notepad. I'm your host, Ibrahim Sani. This interview is taped at Permata Sapura, the iconic skyscraper in the KLCC Business District. For this particular interview, we have a, an interesting guest joining us, Mr. Lo Hock Chiang, the non-independent executive director as well as the CFO, Chief Financial Officer of Aurelius Technologies, Berhad. Aurelius, of course, uh, is going for an IPO. And every time a company goes for an IPO, I am very uh, fortunate to interview uh, these kind of companies because it has grown from strength to strength. Uh, and it has been a privilege to see uh, homegrown companies hit it out there in the market and compete amongst the best. So, Mr. Lo, let's talk a little bit more about Aurelius Technologies. Berhad, we understand that you guys are an EMS-focusing uh, company. Uh, perhaps you can go through with us what electronic manufacturing services actually is. Uh <clears throat> Our company was founded in 1993 and has since established a track record of over 28 years uh, in the EMS industry. EMS stands for Electronic Manufacturing Services. Uh, we currently employ uh, more than 1,000 all local Malaysian. Okay, We are a one-stop EMS company, uh, provide uh, uh, focus on industrial electronics product and also Internet of Things, IoT products. Uh, we have recently broadened our portfolio to produce semiconductor component, IC, in other words, M2M IoT module, as part of our initiative to move up the value change in the, in the semiconductor component manufacturing. The IoT module that we manufactured are designed to incorporate into PCBA to be installed in all IoT devices or product to enable a machine-to-machine -machine communication uh, using wireless technology. We are focused on manufacturing industrial product and contracted directly uh, with the brand or product owner. The company is led by an experienced senior management team. Each member of the senior management team has more than 20 years of experience in the E&E &E manufacturing industry. Right now, you guys are uh, planning to list at the main market of Bursa Malaysia Securities. Um, we're looking at uh, you offering over 77 million new shares um, yep. and the IPO involves a total of 103.8 million shares in, a, uh, uh, in Aurelius yep. Technologies. Uh, this comprises to a sale of up to about 26.8 uh, million existing shares. Um, why do you want to go for an IPO right now? Uh, what kind of expectations do you have uh, from the market uh, regarding this uh, listing? Yeah, we are excited about this uh, IPO. Uh, why we are actually going for IPO at this particular moment, you know, is enable us to strengthen our capital uh, structure. Uh, does uh, enable us to accelerate our growth. Uh, we have seen a very strong demand uh, for our client. Uh, for the product that we manufacture. Uh, for the IO, IO, <coughs> IPO proceed that we uh, receive, uh, that will be uh, approximately 104.7 million. Uh, 40 million of this amount will be used to purchase our new machinery and equipment. Uh, 29.5 will be used to, you know, uh, re repayment for the borrowing. Uh, 28.1 million will be used for uh, our working capital purposes. And the balance is for you know defray the expenses of our IPO. The market may be uh, appearing to be uh, soft, uh, at least amongst uh, in institutional investors. But uh, for retail investors, if we look at last year's numbers as well as this year's numbers, there's a lot of retail uh, interest in terms of the capital market. Uh, do you feel that you're going to get a lot more interest from the retail uh, on top of getting the um, buy-in from institutional investors? Yeah, we have actually a pre, you know, uh, uh, briefing session with, uh, you know, uh, some of the institution, institutional investor. Uh, the primary feedback that we receive, uh, they are, uh, together with us, are very excited uh, about our IPO. Uh, you know, on the business segment, uh, customer that we serve, on the product that uh, you know we built, uh, especially on the IoT type of related product. Uh, we are equally, you know, um, uh, excited about this, uh, you know, uh, new venture or the semiconductor component module that we are manufacturing currently, and we also believe that, you know, IoT 
uh, industry will be you know one of the main pillar of uh, economic growth uh, in the future uh, as for the retail investor uh, we have not uh, you know as we have we have not opened our uh, what they call offering uh, we we are not sure you know the demand uh, from from the uh, from the retail offering um, we'll go for one short break when we come back we'll continue on our conversation with Aurelius technologies Uh, thanks for staying on with us. I have with me our risk technology CFO, Mr. Lo. Uh, we want to talk a little bit more about the business itself. Uh, your sole subsidiary, BCM Electronics, provides the EMS uh, solutions or uh, the uh, uh, electronic manufacturing services solutions uh, to your clients. I mean, of course, uh, there would be some technology transfer between uh, Comintel and Motorola uh, to jointly develop manufacturing capabilities. Uh, Talk through us through this kind of relationship and maybe some of the items that you can bring about uh, regarding the facility that uh, is currently happening at Kulim High Tech Park uh, there. Uh, okay, so, sorry, can I uh, you know, interrupt you, uh, Ibrahim? I think uh, you're mentioning about a, you know, Comintel, but Comintel has nothing to do with this company at the moment. Yes, but uh, EMS Electronics uh, is uh, going for technology transfer agreement between Motorola and Comintel, no? No, that was, I think, you know, well back, uh, very, very long ago. Oh, pardon me. Okay. So, uh, moving along then. Uh, talk to us through the Kulim High Tech Park then. Yeah, we, 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 we started our operation in, uh, you know, uh, rental premises in Pride. Uh, in year 2000, we moved to our, you know, current location in Kulim High Tech Park. Uh, this is our own uh, manufacturing facility. Uh, currently, you know, uh, we are expanding our uh, production fac uh, facility. Uh, we anticipate our expansion to be completed uh, by end of this year, uh, to be ready for occupation, occupied by early next year. Uh, with that, we will have a total, you know, build up, uh, you know, production floor itself, uh, about, uh, you know, 200,000 square feet. Okay, uh, this will enable us to have space uh, to roll out our expansion program. Um, of course, uh, you guys are based in Penang uh, and having a, uh, a facility at Kulim High Tech Park does facilitate that. But uh, do you feel that there is an opportunity for you to expand uh, in other areas in the nation or perhaps even in the region? Or it's mostly going to be focused uh, still uh, in uh, Kulim and uh, Penang? Yeah, in the, in the near future, we will still focus, you know, our operation here in Malaysia. Uh, you know, in the, <clears throat> perhaps, you know, in the five to ten years time, you know, we will think of, you know, going regional uh, to support our customer better, you know, if there's a need that arises. The MCO has affected a lot of businesses. Do you foresee a, a period of recovery following the MCO? And of course, uh, maybe you can talk through us on how a release technologies uh, performed during the MCO. It's been close to two years. Has your business been affected with it? Yeah, you know, COVID-19 is something very new to everyone. Uh, we are not spared with that. You know, uh, you know, when COVID hit us in the early part of 2020, uh, you know, we are not prepared and then uh, as well as our customer, our supplier, you know, we have never experienced such a kind of pandemic before. Uh, you know, with the introduction of MCO, the lockdown by the Malaysian government, uh, the, we, we, we did uh, impacted by the COVID, you know, for the first uh, quarter of last year, uh, you know, we have only a limited uh, capacity allowed uh, for operation in our factory. Uh, but since then, you know, after a few months into MCO, uh, into this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we learned quickly as to how to adapt, you know, how, and how to work, uh, you know, in this COVID environment. Uh, we have seen recovered. Uh, as now, uh, we are allowed to be 100% full operation. Uh, you know, our operation are more or less, you know, back to our no back to normal now. Uh, let's uh, go for one more short break. When we come back, we'll uh, discuss a little bit more about Aurelius Technologies finances.
Welcome back. This is Notepad. I'm your host, Ibrahim Sani. We're taping this interview at Permata Sapura. On the line right now is um, Lo Hock Chiang, the non-independent executive director, as well as the chief financial officer of Forelist Technologies. They are currently going for an IPO very soon. Let's talk about the timeline of the IPO, uh, Mr. Lo. Um, when is it uh, going to be launched? Uh, sorry, when is the IPO uh, launched? And of course, uh, when is the IPO going to be scheduled to be done? Yeah, according to our schedule, uh, we are to launch our IPO on the 29th of this month. Uh, and our IPO is tentatively uh, set, out, set on the 16th of December, uh, 2021. The uh, net profit of the company is around 16, 17 million ringgit, uh, but the revenue uh, is quite considerable at 360 million ringgit. Um, of course, this is a little bit lower uh, versus uh, 390 million ringgit for financial year 20 and 30, January 31st last year. Um, and of course, you have a targeted payout ratio of 20% uh, of your profit. Uh, after tax um, for taking into account uh, working capital requirements. Uh, this is a very, uh, in my opinion, um, uh, quite an interesting kind of company, uh, uh, interesting size. But maybe you can help uh, some of your prospecting investors to understand a little bit better um, what is uh, causing the kind of uh, thin margin compared against a very uh, healthy revenue. What would be some of the bigger cost drivers that you had to na navigate with and what is the potential future of um, uh, Aurelius Technologies in trying to manage a better bottom line and perhaps reduce costs even further? Uh, yeah, for our most recent auditor at CAR, which is uh, you know, 31st January 2021, uh, you know, uh, we were actually impacted by the COVID, you know, uh, where the COVID uh, restriction of MCO uh, in the early part of last year uh, that have impacted, you know, uh, the performance of profitability of the company as compared to the previous year. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think we are, you know, recovered uh, from the MCO. Uh, we are now operating, uh, you know, uh, as normal. Uh, we are, we cautiously, uh, you know, <clears throat> confident that our performance will be better going uh, moving forward. Uh, at the same time, we also, you know, uh, has as I say we have and broadened our portfolio uh, to you know to manufacture you know uh, IoT related uh, what they call semiconductor IC, uh, but sorry, semicon uh, semiconductor multi-component IC, which is an M2M uh, IoT module. And also, you know, uh, uh, looking at, uh, you know, optimizing our cost uh, going forward, uh, you know, we are cautiously optimistic. Uh, our performance in terms of bottom line uh, will improve. Let's uh, learn a little bit more about Aurelius. Uh, how did it come about? Um, who are the founders? Um, and what is the plan for the future for the company? Aurelius, uh, you know, uh, did an MBO uh, in 2018, beginning of 2018. Uh, since then, uh, we have, uh, you know, looked at optimizing uh, our processes. And uh, at the same time, uh, looking at, uh, you know, uh, to <clears throat> looking at broaden the portfolio of our EMS services. Uh, in the immediate term, we have, uh, you know, four pillars of uh, growth that we are looking at. Uh, first, as I mentioned earlier, was to work out the value change in the semiconductor component manufacturing, uh, broaden our portfolio to produce semiconductor component uh, manufacturing. Uh, second is to actually expand our current production facility. Our new factory will be ready by end of the year. Uh, that will provide us about 70% additional uh, production space for our uh, intended growth. Uh, we also intended to purchase additional uh, four surface mounted technology machine, uh, you know, in the one and a half years time from now. Uh, we have also automated our production line, you know, uh, including AGV, introduction of AGV. AGV stands for automated material handling. Uh, this will only not uh, you know, help us to automate the production processes, but at the same time, uh, reduce the reliance on uh, human capital. Uh, 
Uh, the third thing that we will do is we'll continue upgrading our manufacturing facility uh, towards industrial 4.0. So in, the, in addition to the investment in automated the manufacturing line and the processes, uh, we will continue to uh, develop and upgrade our manufacturing execution system uh, for factory automation. Uh, last but not least is our, you know, uh, introduction of our new design product. Okay, uh, we we are <clears throat> we have uh, currently in our development phase of uh, uh, of a develop developed uh, lithium ion battery uh, for the light vehicle application. Uh, for example, the application into golf cart, uh, the application into uh, forklift. Uh, into AGV. Uh, this product will bear our original design and our own brand name. Uh, we expected to launch this product uh, towards the end of next year. Um, if we look at the prospectus, um, between you and your CEO, Lee Chong Yao, Lee Chong Yu, um, you have 35% each in terms of direct uh, percentage of shares, 26% of which is indirect. It seems like uh, Chong Yu and you are both um, drivers, key promoters of the company. Um, what is the relationship like? Uh, do you feel that uh, there's chemistry between the two of you? Do you feel that uh, you guys have what it takes to push the company even further? Yeah, well, uh, Mr. Lee and I have uh, worked uh, together for, for, for many, many years. Okay, We understand each other very well. Uh, we share the same, same vision and the mission and how to bring the company to the next level. Um, I must, more, more importantly, our senior management team uh, has been with the company of, uh, you know, not less than 20 years. And uh, collectively, you know, they have more than, you know, 130 years of experience, you know, uh, in the E&E &E manufacturing uh, segment. So, you know, with that, uh, you know, uh, we are confident, you know, uh, that we can bring our company uh, to the next level. And of course, uh, there are other shareholders as well, including uh, Pixel Advisors, um, TCH, uh, and of course, Titanium. Um, how, how is the dynamics or the uh, uh, relationship like with all these other parties uh, involved in this company? Yeah, they, you know, they are actually our you know, partner. Uh, some of our staff uh, also is actually our partner. Uh, they also have share directly in the company. Uh, you know, that will encourage them to, you know, uh, uh, you know, pursue further and to uh, bring the company uh, to the next high. If there's one thing that you want investors to know about Aurelius, what would it be, uh, Mr. Lo? Yeah, we are the EMS, uh, but we, we believe, uh, you know, the services that we pro uh, provide, uh, you know, a bit different from the traditional EMS there is in the market. Uh, we focus very much into industrial application type of product. Uh, we have very good knowledge, you know, uh, in the RF uh, technology. Uh, we are confident, you know, uh, the IoT products that we build and also the IoT modules that we are producing now uh, have, uh, you know, greater demands you know, uh, in the future. And uh, we, we see this strong demand uh, will continue to be there uh, for the many years to come. Uh, this is in a way, you know, the application of IoT can be quite destructive, you know, in a way that uh, how uh, the company have changed the way it work and also uh, the people, uh, the way uh, uh, they work as well. So uh, we, with that, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, we would like uh, investor to know us better uh, in terms of our capability, uh, in terms of uh, industry that we serve. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was Lohok Chiang, the CFO and non-independent executive director of Aurelius Technologies. Berhad, uh, they are going for an IPO on December 16th. Do keep an eye out for that. If you've missed any part of this interview, just head on to astroawani.com, look for Notepad. You can also look for Aurelius. That's A-U-R-E-L-I-U-S. Uh, on our website, you can also hit us up on all our social media platforms as well. Until then, thanks very much for watching. And of course, Mr. Lo, again, congratulations on your IPO. All the best uh, in your endeavors.
Thank you, Mr. Ibrahim. Thank you a lot.